Good morning, Madam Chair. Thank you um, for having this hearing. And, and uh, this is another topic, uh, Madam Chair, where um, you and I, I think, share a lot of objectives. We've spent a lot of time talking about resiliency and adaptation of our respective coastal states and coastal districts um, and, and the importance of making investments there. Being from South Louisiana, we've uh, had 90% of the coastal wetlands lost in the continental United States, which does make our communities more vulnerable to, to hurricanes and sea rise and other, other challenges uh, related to sustainability. Um, this one, uh, energy efficiency. Look, if we can if we can reduce the consumption of energy and things that we're doing, and uh, whether it's in our business, it's driving vehicles, it's uh, uh, manufacturing, then that helps improve the competitiveness competitiveness of the United States. Energy efficiency, energy conservation efforts, are, are absolutely critical um, in in our long term objectives here, and 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 it's a no regrets approach because. It, it allows us to reduce the, the cost of utility bills for consumers that are struggling with the, um, their ability to, to pay those bills today. It, it helps to reduce the cost of, of fueling vehicles in order to uh, get to work or, uh, or, or, or uh, go to school or uh, spend time with family. Th those are all win-wins and those are no regrets. It improves the competitiveness of the United States. But Madam Chair, I think something that, that, that's really important to keep in mind as well is the international perspective here. Um, you're right, IPCC did release a new uh, report uh, last week. And, and um, it's, it's interesting because what's happened with Ukraine has, has sort of made, I think, a lot of people realize uh, the United States is, is one country in a, in a, in a very large global community, and you have people that operate by different standards, and we often find ourselves trying to apply American values, American ethics, American standards to other countries. How do you think Vladimir Putin feels about that? How do you think he feels about America's values, our standards? Look at what he's doing. He's, he's, he's completely just rolling over people. No respect for human rights, no respect for sovereignty. Yet he's going to be a partner in climate change? Not a chance in hell. What about what about uh, President Xi in China? You, you think looking at what they're doing with slave labor and child labor, uh, the, the way that they completely abuse the, the Uyghurs and human rights, do you, do you really think that China is going to uh, have any respect for human rights? China's released four tons of emissions, increased four tons of emissions for every one ton we've reduced. I, I think that we're looking at ourselves a, 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 a little bit more um, as a bit more inflated than we really are. We're not going to be able to solve this issue on our own. Let me say it again. China has increased emissions four tons for every one ton of emissions we've reduced. That's moving in the wrong direction globally, yet we're sitting here talking about spending not millions, not hundreds of millions, not billions, tens of billions and hundreds of billions of dollars to try to save the planet whenever... We've got other international actors that don't care. They don't care. Let me read you something. Energy, uh, President Biden's energy plan is going to result in higher electricity prices, higher prices at the gas pump, lost revenue sharing for hurricane protection, flood control, and coastal restoration, higher delivery costs, meaning delivery of groceries and all products, more dependence on foreign energy from China, Russia, Iran, and other countries, and a net increase in global emissions. Madam Chair, all of those things, let me run through them again. Higher electricity prices, check, we're seeing it. Higher prices at the gas pump, check, we're seeing it. Lost revenue, because as a result of not doing lease sales, the first president in modern history to not do energy lease, lease sales, we're losing revenue. The United States Treasury is losing revenue, which means because we have revenue sharing for offshore energy production. My home state, one of the most powerful hurricanes to ever make landfall, Hurricane Ida, we're not getting the revenues that we should have to, to build hurricane protection and restoring our coastal ecosystem and other projects, flood control. So, so that one we've realized. Higher delivery cost uh, with inflation and supply chain, we're getting higher costs there. More dependence on foreign energy from China, Russia, and others, we, we're seeing that. Um, a net increase in global emissions, we've seen that. This is a statement that I made on January 27th of last year. Madam Chair, 
I am all for, I am all for the objectives that you've stated, but we have got to have a strategy that is actually global looking in nature and one that truly achieves the objectives, not one that just thrusts costs from the United States taxpayers and makes energy unaffordable and doesn't achieve what I believe are our common environmental goals.